Okay. So uh, this this uh, booting. So one of the key requirements of provisioning uh, uh, is the hardware uh, hardware server's ability to boot over the network instead of the DVD. A pre-boot execution environment is one of the methods that allows to boot over a network and install operating using uh, using the remote environment. So these uh, um, installs were actually called as pixie boot environment and things like that. Uh, basically it was this, it's a combination of protocols uh, which enabled this uh, booting of your uh, booting of your operating system, uh, booting of your sorry your server uh, over the network. Okay, so uh, we have we uh, we it depends upon, as they say, three protocols. Today, actually, we do not require NFS. Uh, we uh, it, it, we can just do it with your DHCP and DFTP. The earlier uh, NFS was the way to do. Today, uh, as I said, NFS has slowly been replaced, and uh, we predominantly try to use. Uh, HTTP as the protocol for the way to go. Okay, so what did these systems come with? All these systems came with a specific network uh, uh, chip which was embedded in your network card and what this would do is uh, when, when this starts up, when your operating system, sorry, when your server starts up, the first thing it will try to do is get an IP address. And that is why you require DHCP. Okay, it will try to get an IP address. Once it uh, gets an IP address, now uh, you know. Once you get an IP address, that means he is connected uh, to the rest of the world, right? That's the whole idea. Be it internal or maybe external. Okay, so it, it gets the whole. Uh, it gets the uh, connectivity that is required uh, to talk to anybody. It's just like for him. Uh, getting a telephone number. Mm -hmm. Okay, once he gets an IP, then he starts searching for the uh, boot server. Okay, he starts searching for the boot server, and and uh, boot server is is nothing but a, what is called as a TFTP server, or, or it is an a lightweight FTP server in which. Uh, there is one code, uh, one executable called the. Uh, so, if you want an operating system to boot today, you know you require a kernel, right? This guy has a network-based booting kernel. So, your machine, your your uh, server would locate the server and pull down that uh, small. A small kernel, which is a, uh, which is nothing but sometimes they call pre-boot kernel. He pulls it down from the ne uh, internet, uh, sorry, uh, from your network. That is from your booting server, which is nothing but a TFTP server. He pulls it down, boots it. Okay. Once he uh, once he boots that small environment, he is now in a position to uh, for uh, for him to locate the Next step that that is the actual operating system itself. So this guy in turn pulls down the actual kernel from us, uh, another server. This time uh, instead of NFS, uh, as I said, it really it's it, it's a HTTP, uh, HTTP server. Your entire actually CD-ROM may be residing in this particular mounted on this particular. Uh, he actually pulls it down from there, and and then he tries to install it. Okay, so uh, so this is how this whole uh, uh, automation of your uh, uh, server booting happens. Actually, it's a complete installation. Okay, so um, now uh, well, how how does this whole thing work? Uh, now there are a couple of things uh, before you uh, before you start we uh, before you in, uh, you know make this work you have to do uh, as I said first thing is installation of your Pixie server okay what is a Pixie server it's a combination of DHCP and uh, TFTP 
Okay. Uh, so today, as I said, we don't use uh, FTP or NFS. We prefer to use HTTPD. Okay. So a uh, DHCP, TFTP, and HTTP combine uh, co uh, combines to form a uh, your uh, your uh, sorry uh, your your PC server. Now, what does the DHCP do? You uh, give you it gives you the IP address. So this guy. Uh, wants to install the operating system. So what does he do? Uh, uh, he will because this system has this system has a network card, and that network card, as I said, a Pixie uh, bootable, uh, a Pixie enabled network card. He will go in search for your. Uh, uh, I said a preboot, a, a small software code pre uh, code called preboot environment. He first downloads it, then uh, once he uh, first he gets a DHCP, then then he gets the preboot in mind, and once he gets that, he will then go and search of your uh, where your actual kernel is, which is actually which is residing in your uh, HTTP server. Okay, uh, and remember, all of this actually should work in your uh, what what as a what we call as a single domain. So, which is very important. Okay. Now, uh, uh, the other thing uh, you, you should rem uh, uh, remember is, uh, see, when do you use your Pixie boot environment? Uh, see, uh, to, because in today's cloud scenario, a Pixie boot environment is one of the most important part, but it it is not used extensively. And we will, uh, and I'll tell you why uh, in, in a little while from now. Okay, so the Pixie Boot environment today is utilized to do only two things: install operating system on bare metal, or install hypervisor. I hope uh, you understand this word hypervisor in your bare metal. So this is basically a a bare metal. Uh, it's basically a bare metal installation. Scenario. Okay, uh, so we should understand this uh, because in the in the cloud environment or or, or, or other environments, we we don't uh, use this to install your operating system. The, the whole intent here is install your operating system uh, for bare metal. Uh, when I say operating system, it is two types: either a full-fledged operating system or an hypervisor. And hypervisor could be your either a VMware. Uh, or uh, a Zen server, uh, whereas for I mean when we talk about uh, virtualization, we'll see a little more on the other thing as well. Whereas it's, it, if it's CentOS, uh, I mean if it's Red Hat, your KVM and uh, and if it's Windows Hyper V, they all come embedded in in itself. So this is your first N1. Uh, so imagine you want to now install hundred systems, uh, right? In 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 one go in your data center. We could have a, a, we could install a couple of uh, Pixie boots, and we can have all of these systems uh, uh, talking to the Pixie boot to do the installation. Okay, now uh, now another question arises: uh, uh, Is is the Pixie uh, is the Pixie server alone uh, okay to uh, do this entire uh, uh, installation? No. Now this is where we have this uh, uh, file called. Uh, this file called kickstart okay uh, so uh, so I, I i use the word jumpstart server right in 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 spark it is called jumpstart server in linux is called kickstart so what is this kickstart server or kickstart file so this is a file which contains um, a certain information which are common to all the servers in the sense when the server installs it needs in um, uh, it's it it uh, it needs maybe a, a fixed IP. Uh, it requires certain applications to be installed, uh, right? Uh, it, it may sometimes require a username and a password to be configured. There are various things that needs to be configured and installed uh, for uh, each system, yeah? and uh, and and these configurations may vary from system to system, right? So all these configurations are kept in this particular file called uh, Kickstart. 
and but if you imagine imagine the situation where there are like thousands of servers right thousands of servers as on the big five uh, be it yahoo google or linkedin then how do you manage so much of these uh, configuration files now that is where these tools like uh, which i think i i just mentioned previously cobbler uh, tools like uh, cobbler uh, foreman and coban are are coming into uh, coming in a way to help you actually manage these uh, configuration files uh, as well as uh, the uh, uh, probably the respective images itself right uh, I, i we are talking here of basically a centos maybe this environment can have multiple other os suze your dev, uh, your ubuntu anything so this guy these servers like a cobbler servers for man servers or crowbar servers Uh, they help you to manage these images and manage these profiles and what are these profiles profiles are the individual uh, attributes uh, for that respective machine which should get in, which should get installed when you install your uh, when you install your operating system okay so um, are you getting uh, this by now any doubts that you have on on this particular part what pxc environment this is the first level of automation that you see in a data center even before you install your application you just started in, uh, implementing your data center as i said uh, and i say and i keep repeating that after dns dhcp you actually build your pxc boot environment and what is pxc boot environment for to uh, to install uh, you know your software that is basically operating system and uh, or your hypervisor in bare metal scenarios okay okay so uh, i think uh, i i i did uh, tell a lot about this uh, so how how does this whole thing happen uh, there is a, a target machine uh, uh, yeah i you know i mean sometimes it just helps a little uh, to do uh, to show you with the lab I, i'll just show you a little bit so uh if i take uh, any of these machines uh, uh yeah i just take one of these machines and if you see here uh, see uh, us here i mean yeah we, we had the option to yeah, i mean the windows dos and uh, uh, windows uh, uh, you know those uh, windows 3.1 and all were through floppy right so we also have this option called network boot so if you set network booting in your uh, laptop or servers or whatever it will start booting through the network okay so this is where the option for this to function we have to set up the uh, pxc server okay so that of course this, this whole exercise we are going to see as a part of the labs and and so i i hope you kind of understand how how this is all uh working and and i said uh, uh, so the next step is all the uh, for for your pxc boot to work uh, you should have your network card with those embedded chips earlier uh, these network cards did not have this uh, 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 you know pxc pxc chip now by default it comes with uh, these chips that i mean there's no no network card which does not actually come with these chips. okay so uh, uh again continuation of the same process of how this actually happens and i said uh, uh, first uh, i think uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, the first step is to identify where your uh, first step is to get an ip address for your machine uh, once you get an ip address we look for where that uh, uh, pxc server is and it downloads uh, a small boot image hmm? Uh, once the boot image is, is downloaded it then searches for your uh, actual booting files that's your actual kernel okay and once uh, uh, that is all up uh, your system is able to install so when you install what is happening is it's actually referring to this file called the start file uh, it is in this file where all your configuration information is kept and based on that 
uh, see, they, they, uh, look at the normal installation process. What and all things we are giving? We give a host name. We set your time zone. We set a username, password. We set your server partition, your hard disk partitions, right? And you may also say that I want to additionally install all these like Now, all these steps, literally every step that you go through your uh, uh, your uh, your install when you're installing through your uh, CD can also uh, can be uh, can then be automated using this start. Uh, so once you just switch on uh, and you have this configuration file, it downloads everything, installs everything, and you are ready to. Uh, uh, yeah, it installs everything and and that's it. It, it uh, installs and in the next uh, step you see you realize that the machine is already installed and is ready to boot. Okay, so your whole installation will be done in second, uh, not not really second, uh, or maybe few minutes compared to the traditional van. But here it is. Uh, what you need to do to do such an installation, you just need to plug in your system, uh, power on, and make sure your network card is uh, your your network port is connected, and and that's it. The ins entire installation is done. Uh, by the time you're back uh, to see uh, the, the other systems uh, as such. It's basically sometimes also called as unattended installation. Okay, so you can do this with any kind of operating system, uh, be it your uh, Linux world, your Windows world, or your traditional Unix world as such. Now we also added one more layer as installing the hypervisor in the same day. Okay, so when I say hypervisor, it's basically uh, the virtualization operating system. Okay, so this is basically the flow. Uh, I, I think uh, we would uh, probably be seeing a, a, a working uh, a, a lab of this whole uh, PXE environment. How do you configure these? And uh, we will actually install an OS based on that.